Former Commodorean Neil Harris posted to the Commodore International Historical Society Facebook group on February 1st. Would anyone in the Washington, D.C. area like my CBM 8032 system? Well, I had been on the hunt for a nice 8032 for quite a while, and I wasn't having much luck, so this was right up my alley. Fortunately, I was able to contact Neil and we made arrangements for me to pick up his Commodore items. Just a few days later, on February 5th, I left my house in Pittsburgh at 5 a.m. to make the three and a half hour drive to the Washington, D.C. area. I arrived right around 9 a.m. and not only did Neil hook me up with some dream Commodore gear, we also shared a really nice breakfast together at a local spot called Java Nation we were able to walk to. I got the pastrami Reuben for breakfast. Now, because I'm so interested in the history of Commodore, you can imagine how many questions I had. Neil was super patient and told me a ton of great stories from his time at Commodore and Atari. After breakfast, I was back in my car and on my way home to Pittsburgh. One of the items I picked up from Neil was this 8050 Commodore disk drive. This is an IEEE 48 dual floppy drive made for the PET series around 1980. Neil mentioned that the drive latch mechanisms were broken, and indeed, you can see how this one just flops around in the wind. Taking a closer look reveals what's going on. There's a plastic clip that a brass pin fits through that's supposed to be attached to the drive release mechanism. The ears on the plastic clip have broken off and they no longer retain the brass pin. I posted to the Commodore Pet CBM Enthusiast Facebook group asking if anyone had spare parts they could sell me. Instead, I discovered that this is a known issue with this model of Tandon Drive, and that Adrian's Digital Basement had recently done a video about using 3D printed parts to repair the drives. I don't have a 3D printer, but the Commodore community did not let me down. Bobby Slater, who does not know me from a hill of beans, kindly offered to print a few parts and send them to me. They arrived a few days later. To give credit where it's due, I found this post from April 23rd, 2018 in the Vintage Computer Federation forum. The person who created the 3D printed part appears to be L.D. Kramer, who mentioned it in this post and then later uploaded his design to Thingiverse for everyone to benefit. Great work, L.D. Kramer. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail fixing this because Adrian's digital basement already gave it the full treatment. There's nothing I'd be able to add that he didn't already cover. So I already fixed drive one, I'll quickly walk you through fixing drive zero. This plastic part right here, this is the part that's broken. You can see how both the ears are broken off of it there. Here's a better look at the broken part on the left and the new 3D printed part that Bobby Slater sent to me. Bobby, thank you again for being so helpful. I'm ready to put everything back together, so I have all the parts I need right here. The new plastic hinge plate mounts to the latch door by pushing that brass pin through both parts. However, the holes in the hinge plate aren't quite large enough for the pin to fit through. I'll need to open those up a little bit. Looks good, now I can put everything back together.
I'm gonna do a quick smoke test here. The drive's plugged in and I'm gonna power it on and see what happens. The best case is that the drive will initialize and the status light will change to green. The worst case is that smoke will come out and I'll frantically power it back off. Excellent, no blinking lights, no smoke, just a green status LED. I'm gonna connect Neil's 8032 now and see if it can read a disc. I have this ancient Word Pro 5 backup disc, but I do know it works. I use it often, so let's see if we can read it here. Well, this video didn't quite go as planned. Frankly, I expected some of this stuff not to work. And I thought, well, it'll be really cool. I'll fix this drive latch and then figure out what's wrong and we'll walk through fixing it. But everything worked. So that was a bonus. But don't worry, I have an awesome idea already lined up for this stuff. And uh, I want to make Neil proud and really get some good use out of this. I mean, the coolest thing for me here is... This is Neil Harris's actual setup that he was using when he worked at Commodore. And here I am running it now in the Commodore room in 2023. I'm super excited and incredibly grateful. So Neil, thank you again very, very much. It was awesome to meet you. It was great talking to you. I appreciate all the great stories you told me and I hope to meet you again. Have a good one, everyone. Mm -hmm.